Hey folks, in this video, I've got a free Photoshop vignette action for you. So stick around, I'm gonna show you why this thing's useful, why it's a little bit different from how you can do this sort of thing in Lightroom, and most importantly, how you can get it for free. Okay. Let's get started. How are you guys? I have been away for a couple of weeks. I went on vacation, hence the channel being a little bit quiet. So week off, then I came back, got stuck into this thing, little Bandai X-Wing build, which I've been crazy airbrushing over here in the booth, got me distracted, forgot to upload a video. So yeah, a little bit quiet. We're back in the swing of things now. So I've got this shot here in Photoshop of Baby Yoda. Uh, this is a statue that is going to be released by Gentle Giant soon that I have shot for them. So pretty much done with the uh, editing here. So what I wanted to show you is how to pop a vignette on this really easily. Uh, it's actually already got a vignette on it, but I'm going to add another one just to kind of really overdo the effect and show you uh, what you can do with this. Let's take a step back and talk about workflow because Normally what I do with photos, and especially if I'm doing a uh, product photo like this, is I start off in Lightroom. So I go through all my photos in Lightroom, I get a kind of consistent treatment across all the photos in a shoot. So you know, exposure, recovering highlights, bringing the shadows up, sharpness, noise reduction, um, don't usually do any color correction. but. I'll tweak all those on one photo and then because all the other photos in a shoot like this are under the same lighting conditions, I'll apply those settings for every single photo in the shoot. So it might be like eight photos that I choose out of say 30 I've taken. Uh, I'll get all those in the shoot and then normally I'll apply a vignette in there as well. Um, what that means is when, when I'm done with Lightroom and I then bring the shot into Photoshop, if I want to do any further work, sort of precise work, you can see over here in the layers, I've got a few adjustment uh, layers on top of the photo to do color correction, color grading, uh, not the kind of stuff you can do easily in Lightroom. But what it means is I've baked the vignette effect in, in Lightroom, so I can't change it. So sometimes if you do that, you get into Photoshop and then you might see a problem or realize, oh, you know what, I want to crop the image slightly. And once you crop it, you're going to kind of lose the vignette or you're going to... Um, uh, change the sort of uh, effect of the vignette so it doesn't quite work if you're cropping into the image. Thinking about it another way, if you're doing like a composite, so movie poster photo manipulation, and you're in those sort of final stages of you're done and you're finishing and you're doing the same kind of thing with color grading, effects, uh, sharpening, uh, and then you, you maybe want to put a vignette on right at the end, what I know some folks do is they'll take a layer stamp of their whole document. So I've got the final image, all the layers stamped into one final layer. Then they'll come into Photoshop here, going to filter, camera raw filter, which is essentially what's in Lightroom, apply the vignette effect in there onto that layer stamp, and it's a lock, right? More often than not, what will happen is you do that and then you decide, oh, you know what, I want to change something or I want to export something slightly different. So you've got to delete that layer stamp and do that process all over again. So make your change, create a new layer stamp, camera raw filter, vignette, and so on and so forth. It's just way easier if you have the vignette as an adjustment layer that's dynamic and you can change it on the fly um, so you don't have to lock yourself into a, a layer stamp like I'm talking about. So I've got this little action. It's not actually this one, vignette selection, which you'll see under the default actions in Photoshop. Uh, I've got this one, vignette, which I use to pop on uh, a kind of dynamic vignette in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how this works, show you how to tweak it, uh, and then we'll sort of talk about it a little bit more. Okay, let's start this off. So it's dead simple. Top of your document, whatever the top layer is, just get the action here, click play, pop. 
one adjustment layer. As you can see, it's just a gradient fill. Immediately, you're probably thinking this looks terrible. So the idea is once this is in place, you just play with the fill or the opacity on this gradient adjustment layer and you can back it off, uh, dial in the strength. So that's no different from if you were doing this in uh, Lightroom. Lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, the benefit of this is you've now got a few things you can play with. So all this is, is a radial gradient. So if you see here uh, on this uh, uh, adjustment layer, gradient adjustment layer, you can double click the gradient fill part and tweak this. So there's a couple of things you want to play with in here. Well, there's a couple of things you may want to play with in here. What I'll do is I'll just dial the fill up so it's a little bit heavier because that's just going to enable you to see the, uh, I guess, impact of, of changes when you're back in here. So you've got the scale. I, the two things you're going to play with are the gradient itself, the colors, and the scale. So the scale um, will sort of zoom in and out of the gradient, so to speak. So if I go in sort of too close, it's no longer really a vignette. So you may want to just sort of back that out so it's hugging the edges of your photo a bit more, um, depending on what the aspect ratio of your image is, if it's sort of a 4 by 3 kind of thing like this. You know, 150% scale is probably about right. If you're doing Instagram, maybe 130, I don't know. Point is, you got the scale there, so you can sort of back the vignette uh, back and forth with that. But then the other thing you've got is the actual gradient itself. So this is black on one end and black on the other, but it's completely transparent at this end. And I've got the transparency stop a little bit further up just so um, the roll off if you like of the black to transparent is happening more towards the edges rather than all the way into the center um, because you you want to keep the vignette effect to the edges and obviously not have it come into the center so if it's sort of too heavy you can just pull this back um, and that will tighten it up a little bit uh, on the outside so that's one you want to play with I pretty much wouldn't touch anything else in here. It's just that one you might want to tweak, um, but you've got it there. Point is, it's dynamic. I can leave that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, that. Go back to my document, do anything I like, tweak with color grading, whatever, and then I might decide, oh, I don't like this. I want to change it again. You can come in here, tweak those settings. You're not locked in like if you'd gone through uh, Lightroom and you know applied that. Uh, vignette directly to the photo or um, to a layer stamp. So you got the gradient controls itself through there. You got the fill, which is you know just going to dial it in or out. You can also use opacity, um, and then the blend mode. So you may prefer like darken or multiply. I think even hard light, uh, pin light. I'm probably thinking will give different effects. Um, you could even tweak the um, blend if on the adjustment layer itself and knock it out of the highlights. Like this is a nice effect. So I could come in here and say, you know what? Don't apply this if the underlying layer has lighter areas. So see how over here on the right where the sky is lighter. If I back that off, see how it's just popping the vignette out of the uh, light, lighter areas of the sky. So effectively, it allows the highlights to pop through the vignette and preserve them. So you've got all these controls, all this stuff you can do and kind of understand a bit better uh, in the Photoshop world that's a little bit harder to sort of see what it's doing if you're in Lightroom. So very, very simple action that just pops that on. And as you can see, you've got these controls. You can go through um, and pop that on your image. So there you go. That's all there is to it. That's my little Photoshop vignette action. So where do you get it for free? So it is free. There's a little catch, though. Um, but there is also good news. Um, so this is subscribers only. So if you go to the channel page uh, here on Toy Shooter uh, and subscribe, 
there's a subscriber only video and then in the description of that video there's a whole bunch of links to free stuff you can get and in that is a code to get this and a whole bunch of other free actions I use for retouching. You can actually see them all here. So I've been making a series of videos on this on the channel. So you're not just going to get the vignette action, you're going to get all the other ones. You can go on the channel and watch all the uh, other videos I'm uploading about these actions. So you're going to get all that in one pack. But as I say, the catches is subscribers only. So you'll get the code on that subscriber only video on the home page. Then you can use that to hop over to Gumroad, grab this for free, and you can download these, do what you like with them. Um, th there's a lot of other stuff in there as well. So there's a couple of other freebies in there you can grab. Uh, I'm adding to this over time for subscribers, keep you guys sweet and happy. So jump over now, download this, have fun with it. See you in the next video. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.